When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My name is Pastor Alyssa and I am excited to welcome you to worship today. Welcome to our online open door worship space. I invite you to join me in our opening prayer as we center ourselves for a time of worship. Like fireworks against the night sky, may your love for us, O oh God, explode within us, that our lives would burst forth with the flame of your Holy Spirit and show the earth with celebrations of the freedom we find in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our scripture reading is uh, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. So I'd like to invite you to please get out your Bible and, and turn it to, uh, to chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. And I'm going to read it from the New Revised Standard uh, 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 Translation. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we stopped him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Where there worm never dies, and fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hi, friends and siblings in Christ. I am Pastor Kalina with our message. Uh, this is the last Sunday of our sermon series, Love in Action. And our scripture passage is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. Um, before uh, this uh, story, uh, we learn that uh, Jesus um, was in Capernaum and uh, he sensed that his disciples were arguing who will, who is the greatest of them all. And, and Jesus uh, told them, the greatest must be the least. If you want to be great, you must be servant, servant to all. And for me, the key word of the servanthood is the servanthood to who? Um, and Jesus said, servant to all, everyone. When it comes to this passage, uh, it seems like that the uh, disciples have still not really get it, um, what Jesus meant by all. You know, in Christ's ministry, uh, we learn that it's all about the teaching uh, how to love God and how to love one another, um, love your neighbors and loving one another. And loving one another means loving all. Um, the beginning of this uh, passage, uh, his favorite disciple, um, John, came to him and he was... Uh, reporting to Jesus that there was someone who was uh, casting out demons in his name. 
and he stopped them. They tried to stop him and uh, because they need to know that they are not, you know, disciples of Christ, probably. And to their amazement, Jesus uh, did not like that. And, and this was a, an opportunity for uh, Jesus to teach them what he meant by all. He told them if anybody who is practicing um, casting out demons and doing things in his name, that they are a friend. And they must not be stumbling block and stop them is being a stumbling block. We may recall that um, Jesus had been teaching and has been preaching for many people. And he was feeding the hungry, um, the thousands. And many people had believed him uh, and his ministry grew. And although he had only 12 disciples, but many people had believed and many people had acted according to his message. And they were able to be able to um, heal. God had granted them the power to heal and even to cast away demons, which was great ministry, something that Christ was so happy about. Unfortunately for his disciples, they were not happy about that. But here in this passage, uh, we learn what Jesus' ministry uh, for us as Christians, you know, that following Christ at the core of our being, one theologian said, it is something too precious to be surrendered likely. Um, our Christianity is not something just for us to be a, to do practice in, from our convenience, I mean, in our convenience only, but something that we can just um, put away and we can practice it when we want to. Um, out of our, um, it's, we practice loving Christ only according to our uh, convenience only. Um, but Christ has seen uh, this light uh, what John has brought, Christ has seen fruits of his ministry. But John and his disciples were trying to uh, stop that. So Christ here not only teaches his disciples, but um, here he teaches all of us, uh, his followers, that we must accept the other. And when he, he meant, what he meant by the other is except all. Because his next move, he, he brought to them, he lift up a child and he told them that they must accept the child because accepting a child who's not have any high status in a community, um, when you do that, you also accept Christ as your siblings. Mm -hmm. And when you accept Christ as your siblings, you accept God as father. Wow, that opens up a worldwide of ministry for uh, us. What Jesus had opened up here, um, the ministry to all. John Wesley got that when he was restricted from uh, preaching in, in the churches. John Wesley found that there's an opportunity to be able to preach outdoor and be out there in the fields. And he was able to reach out to more people than, um, than um, vice versa. If he was preaching in the, in the churches, he won't be able to reach out to more people as he did. And he said that my ministry is a ministry to the world. We have been disappointed because of the COVID-19, uh, uh, which their its health guidelines restricted us from, you know, being we, you know, distance us from uh, each other. We were not able to have churches in church, 
And uh, not only that, but we have our usual uh, uh, groupings. Uh, we're not able to do that. But what it did was open up an avenue uh, for us to use the World Wide Web and to be able to reach more people uh, like we do now. Not only preaching in a church, but I am extending a Christ message for us to accept the all um, in our ministry uh, here on the World Wide Web. Karl Barth, uh, the famous uh, theologian, uh, said, described that the radical acceptance of others is the basis of uh, Christian ethics. As, you know, it may be easy for us to say to accept the others, but I know, and you understand, we all understand this is not easy at all. Uh, because we have to accept uh, those who are not so bright, those, pe those who, uh, people who, of all abilities, uh, and, and also uh, people of all colors, strangers. Um, even, uh, you know, um, it's, it's just so hard for, for us to think about the other person, which we call the other, uh, to accept that person. That is radical to do. But in this passage, Jesus teaches us, yes, that they are also part of what he meant by all. Our ministry um, to all. The Open Door Churches um, of Salem and Kaiser um, brought that, that idea into practice and forming the parish of the Open Door. That each uh, churches of each United Methodist churches, each of the four uh, United Methodist churches, uh, Morningside, uh, Clear Lake, uh, First United Methodist Church, and Trinity, um, each of their churches, they come together to form this parish so that they, we are able to share our resources and uh, help one another, have a wider community uh, to help our communities. Uh, to solve the uh, our uh, problem of feeding the hungry, and not only that, but to be able to uh, create new ministries where we can reach out to help uh, all the people here in our community of Salem and Kaiser. This is um, the the message uh, of living out love in action. It is not to be done only for our convenience, but acting out love is to reach out, uh, to be able to um, accept the other person that you call the other. Um, and reaching out to them and loving them begin with accepting them. Christ is here, is teaching his disciples uh, not to be stumbling block. Because when we do not accept the other, uh, we are just being a stumbling block right there. What I mean is that uh, accepting the other, uh, what I uh, mean by uh, being a stumbling block um, he, here is that uh, when we do not act with love to others, there are witnesses watching us, and we are just being stumbling blocks uh, as people of Christ for our faith. Um, they won't believe us because we, they have watched us not accepting another person into Christ's ministry. It's not easy um, practice, but it is core of our practice as uh, siblings of Christ and also children of God. With the uh, opportunities of the World Wide Web, we are able to reach out to all people uh, for them to hear this message today. Christ preaches and people believe. And when you believe, you act on your own between you and Christ. 
living in you. You are being empowered. Each and every one of us is empowered to do Christ's work. And Christ expected you as a sibling to be able to act out his love in wherever you are, in your workplace, uh, in every place as you go, in every act of love, you are sharing Christ's love to the other. Please pray with me. Most beloved Holy Creator, we thank you for Jesus for teaching us how to practice loving you by accepting and loving others, your children, siblings of Christ in our communities. Amen. A gentle healer came into our town today. He touched blind eyes and their darkness left to stay. But more than the blindness, he took their sins away. The gentle healer came into our town today. The gentle healer came into our town today. He spoke one word that was all he had to say. And the one who had died just rose up straight away. The gentle healer came into our town today. Oh, we see like just an ordinary man with dirty feet and rough and gentle hands but the words he says are hard to understand and yet he seems like just an ordinary man the gentle he today. I just looked around and found he'd gone away. Some folks from town who followed him, they say that the gentle healer is the truth, the life, the way. As we enter into a time of prayer together with one another, I'd like to remind you that if you're joining us for the live premiere of this worship service, there is a chat function. You're welcome to place your joys, concerns, prayer requests in the chat. If you're joining us after the premiere, the video has a comment section. You're welcome to share any of your joys, concerns, prayers in the comment section of this video and know that we are praying with you and we're praying for you. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this time and space where we can gather across our various times and spaces to praise and worship you. We are thankful for a pause, for a safe space, for a place to share what is on our hearts. We give thanks, O Lord, that we can bring all things to you in prayer. And so we lift to you uh, the prayers that are on our hearts, the prayers in our comments, the prayers in our chat, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of hope, prayers of healing. For we know, O Lord, that we can bring all things to you in prayer. On this, our fourth and final week of our Love in Action series, we reflect on the many ways in which we have learned and grown in our faith and our understanding of how love can be shown and how we too are called to be love in action. We ask the Lord that you help to continue to lead and guide us, 
that we might sow seeds that are fruitful seeds that uh, grow love and grace uh, and seeds of inclusion uh, that we O oh lord are a loving presence in our community uh, and in our wider world that our love uh, will be shown in the ways in which you have shown love for each and every one of us and so together we join in sharing the prayer that your son taught us to pray sharing our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen with your peace you alone O oh Lord are holy come and fill our hearts with your peace Alleluia come and fill our hearts with your peace you alone O oh Lord are holy And fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Friends, we continue to be grateful for your continued generosity. Over the past couple of years, we have accomplished great things. We have weathered many storms. And now as we continue all along on the path toward restoration, we are so grateful for the strides that we have made in faithfulness. If you would like to be a partner with us in our ministries of the Open Door Churches of Salem-Kaiser, we invite you to visit our website, opendoorchurches.org, and to look for the giving tab at the top of the page where you'll find instructions on how to give a gift to the ministries of the Open Door Churches or one of our partner congregations. Will you pray with me? Lord, we give in gratitude for all that you have entrusted to our care. May the Holy Spirit work through these gifts that the world may be changed through them, and that we may be changed in giving them. Amen. Hi friends, I'm Pastor John Fleming of the Open Door Churches, the United Methodists of Salem-Kaiser. I'm here in the historical room, the Oliphant Historical Room, at Salem First United Methodist Church to talk a little bit about our Methodist heritage. Uh, as most of you probably are aware, the Methodists were some of the first people to come into the Willamette Valley, uh, and we would not have any of our congregations had it not been for those who have gone before us and have prepared the way for the ministries that we now have today. One of those congregations, West Salem United Methodist Church, ceased to operate back in 2020, just in the throes of the pandemic. That building was eventually deeded to the Open Door Churches, 
And we spent a great deal of time in 2021 uh, under the leadership of Reverend Jeff Lowry, who was doing some community organizing work with us at the time, analyzing the best use of the properties that, that we hold in sort of a collective trust, those congregations of the Open Door Churches. And one of the possible um, results of that work was that we might sell the West Salem property. Well, indeed, it, as it turns out, we have. Uh, the Open Door Church's board voted to put that property on the market back in the spring, and we were pleasantly surprised by how quickly that property was sold to a private investor. Now, we had hoped that a nonprofit or some other organization might purchase the property so that some of the existing ministries, um, the West Salem Food Bank and uh, the Recovery Ministries and City Vibe, which is a ministry that feeds the homeless, would be able to still continue to work in that building. We knew that the possibilities that they would eventually have to relocate uh, were probably pretty high. Um, but because of the speed of this, uh, of this sale, uh, those organizations are now being uh, relocated to other areas. We're in the midst of some of those conversations, trying to help them to find new ways to relocate. Um, but we wanted to let you know that that property has been sold. The proceeds from that sale will be used for some kind of capital investment in the future. Uh, and so we don't have exactly an idea of how that, how that will happen. Some of those funds are already going to be paying for some improvements that we're making, safety improvements. Uh, to the building at Las Naciones, uh, the former Jason Lee United Methodist Church, and some uh, and some new flooring uh, for that, so that those ministries that are a part of that, including Las Naciones United Methodist Fellowship, will be a part will be able to enjoy the use of that building. So as we continue to analyze what the future use of those funds will be, I hope that you'll be in prayer for us. I hope that you'll be in prayer for those ministries that are being forced to relocate as they look for new homes uh, and new places to do their ministries. We've enjoyed being in partnership with those organizations and are deeply grateful for their leadership and the ministries that they have provided uh, in West Salem. So that's it for now. Uh, lots more to figure out as we move forward into the future. And I hope, as I say, that you'll be in prayer for all of us as part of the Open Door Church's board, exploring new possibilities um, and new ways for the United Methodists of our area to be in ministry with our community. Friends and siblings in Christ, thank you for joining us for this worship time with the Open Door Churches of Salem and Kaiser, Oregon. You can join us again next Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific Time for worship. Now, I would like to send you out with these blessings. May the love of God surround you. May the love of God uplift you. May the love of God stand with you through the challenges ahead. May the love of God convince you in every situation to love. Go now to love others, even as Christ loved you. Amen. Mm -hmm.